Our next experiment is one we hopefully won't forget. Helping to test our memories will be magician and science enthusiast Adam Marta. All three of us have binged in the past and we've all got different levels of memory recall. But how do we stack up against the statistical norm? Righto guys, time to test your memories. I'd like you to remember the colour of this dish and focus on the yellow flames. We have 13 gold coins and six chocolate hearts. Say it over in your mind and commit that to memory. You've got it? Perfect. The experiments we're doing today are illustrating a number of the principles that we use when we're doing formal memory testing. All right, ready, pay attention as I spread the cards for you. We'll be showing the participants a range of objects, and we'll do this in a fun way with cards, with coins, with magically appearing objects. And we'll be asking them to store this in memory, consolidate it there, and then pull it out about 30 minutes later. Not long term, not two or three days, but 30 minutes in active working memory. Some red liquid and some voodoo. Concentrate on the voodoo doll. Over the course of 10 minutes, we've been asked to remember 35 different things. My memory's pretty good, but I'm hoping the ghosts of binging past don't come back to haunt me. And the fish. After a 30 minute break, it's exam time. We've got to use our working memory to remember all the objects and random sequences we've just been presented with. The exact way in which alcohol damages the brain is uncertain. Many scientists see a transdisciplinary approach where different fields of science come together with a united cause as the key to preventing or even reversing alcohol-related brain damage. OK, now we've added up all these results and they're interesting. Now, Steve, all of the tests show that you've got absolutely normal results. You were scoring really well on all of those tests. But the guys have got different results. Essentially what we found is that yours was much lower than Steve's performance and Henry's was moderately lower compared with Steve's performance. Of course, this is only a small sample size and there are lots of reasons why our memories may be different. But the results are indicative of the latest science. A study by the University of Pittsburgh has shown that the hippocampi of heavy drinking teens had actually shrunk by up to 10%. They also found memory recall was 10% less than adult drinkers. If I keep drinking the way I do, which is a, a very, very occasional binge, will my memory be affected? If you keep drinking, we have to look at the immediate effects of each time you drink, and that can cause damage on the spot. And then there's the long-term effects where it gets worse and worse and worse the longer you drink. Say if I stop binge drinking, for a while, how long would it take for me to get more memory back? When you do stop, there is always the improvement which follows. So you can improve, but the more damage you've done, the harder it is to improve. So what you'd really need to ask is, is it worth keeping on drinking for all that time before you stop? While previously we may have thought that teen binge drinking was just youngsters letting off steam, there's now plenty of evidence that there are long-term hazards related to adolescents drinking too much alcohol. So if we can't binge on booze, then we'll have to overdose on some good, clean fun. I'm going to now teach you a classic magic effect. <sighs> OK, give me a go. All right. Yep, and without this sort of flowery movement, you just sort of bang. So that was flowery. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got my new party okay. trick. 
Let's just hope I can remember it. Beautiful.